Hey guys, this is Vinal Puma, and today I'd like to talk about the current state of the Texas Commonwealth in the Fallout universe. Unlike a lot of the other countries or just parts of the world I've talked about in previous videos, Texas is pretty interesting in the sense that it has actually been featured in previous Fallout games. Specifically, much of the setting of the infamous Fallout Brotherhood of Steel takes place in Texas. Fortunately for us, this game was removed from the canon by Bethesda due to its numerous continuity issues. After all, I doubt Elder Maxon or any member of the Brotherhood of Steel would allow a ghoul into their ranks. Unfortunately for us, we're sort of left in the dark as to what ultimately happened to Texas in the Fallout universe. So today, I figured I could go over what we know as well as speculate about the Texas Commonwealth's fate in both the post-war era and potentially during the events of Fallout 4. So, I guess without further ado, let's talk about what we currently know about Texas based on the current Fallout canon. In Fallout 4, it was confirmed that Texas, along with Arkansas, became a part of what would become known as the Texas Commonwealth in 1969 during the Fallout timeline. Texas and Arkansas presumably remained states up until October 23rd, 2077, when the bombs started to fall across America. After the war, the only thing we really have to go on is the word of an NPC from the original Fallout named Tycho, and there is a line of dialogue where Tycho says the following. We rangers hail from back east, what used to be called Nevada. Our heritage stretches back to the days of the Texas Rangers. We learn survival and combat skills in order to go out into the world and have a chance of surviving and making things better. In case you're wondering, the Desert Rangers eventually ended up merging with the NCR Rangers, and the monument constructed at the Mojave Outpost in Fallout New Vegas is a commemoration to the Desert Rangers and NCR's alliance. Ultimately, it's pretty cool that the iconic and badass-looking Desert Rangers from Fallout New Vegas have origins with the Texas Rangers that formed before the Republic of Texas existed in the early 1800s. Otherwise, most of the other references to Texas in the main series games are mostly in passing. For example, in Fallout 2, John Casty wonders if Texas survived the war, while in Fallout New Vegas, the Protectron Prim Slim talks about how Vicky and Vance, Fallout's version of the 1930s Bonnie and Clyde, died in Plano, Texas. There are also some references to some Texas baseball teams in Fallout 4, but again, this is just a passing reference. So other than these passing mentions in the main series of games, much of the rest of the lore surrounding Texas in both the pre- and post-war periods may or may not be canon. This is because this lore is either from the Fallout Bible, which may or may not be canon, is from Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, which is definitely not canon, or is from Van Buren, aka Interplay's version of Fallout 3, where much of the lore there is based around a game that was ultimately never released. With this said, if I had to put a bet on it, there is a possibility that elements of the Fallout Bible, as well as Van Buren, aren't necessarily canon now, but ideas from these sources may end up becoming canon material in the future. So, we'll go ahead and go over these two sources anyway. When it comes to the Fallout Bible, there's an entry dated to 2052 that reads, and I quote, a television documentary into the withered husk of the Texas oil fields brings the oil shortage into the American households and reveals how deep the energy crisis runs. This would indicate that the oil fields in Texas ran dry and may have possibly had a considerable effect on people's lives in Texas in the pre-war period. Perhaps Texas was experiencing some kind of economic downturn up until the Great War. As for the information we have on Van Buren, all that's really mentioned is that after Caesar's Legion was defeated at Hoover Dam, Caesar moved east of Texas. And this would imply that Caesar may or may not have gained control of Texas, as well as some territory east of it. Now, given that Caesar's Legion appears in Fallout New Vegas, there's a battle for Hoover Dam in New Vegas, and the fact that some of Legate Lanius's dialogue at the end of Fallout New Vegas seems to indicate that he fought in a campaign to the east, it is possible that Caesar could have taken control of some territory in Texas. Plus, when you consider that a lot of the material that was supposed to be in Van Buren ultimately made its way into Fallout 3 and New Vegas, there is a possibility that this could have actually happened. 
even though there isn't any official confirmation of this from Bethesda themselves. Either way, this extended lore from both the Fallout Bible and Van Buren does tell us a lot about what the state of Texas could be like in both the pre- and post-war eras. However, before we elaborate more on that, let's discuss what Texas and, to a lesser extent, Arkansas are like in our current real world. In our society, Texas is the second largest state when it comes to physical area and is also the second most populated state in the country. Interestingly, while we may tend to think of the state of Texas as a desert-like state, sort of like Arizona, Nevada, or New Mexico, less than 10% of the state's land area is actually desert, and most of that is concentrated towards the western part of the state that, of course, borders New Mexico. In fact, a few of the most populated cities in Texas are in the eastern part of the state and reside in a climate that's actually more similar to what you might see in parts of Louisiana or other bordering states like Oklahoma and Arkansas. Economically speaking, while the cattle industry did play a huge part in the Texas economy and thus helped form our cultural perception of the state, it was really the discovery of major oil deposits in eastern Texas that was really the driving force behind the state's economic boom in the early 1900s and throughout the 20th century. Over time, Texas began to enter other key industries and is currently ranked second when it comes to the number of Fortune 500 companies in the state, only being surpassed by New York and slightly beating out California. To give you some idea of the economic prestige of Texas, companies like Halliburton, AT&T, ExxonMobil, GameStop, Whole Foods, American Airlines, and of course, the aptly named Texas Instruments all hold corporate offices in the state. So with this in mind, it's fairly safe to say that Texas is a major economic center for the United States. In fact, if Texas was a country, it would have the 10th largest economy in the world, putting it ahead of countries like Canada, South Korea, Russia, and even Australia. As for Arkansas, it's not quite as impressive as Texas, coming in as the 29th largest state and the 33rd most populated state. However, economically, it is worth mentioning that Arkansas is the seat for at least seven or so Fortune 500 companies. Of the ones that you would recognize, one of them is Tyson Foods, while the other is actually Walmart, who just so happens to be number one on the Fortune 500. Whether there is some parallel between a Walmart and some pre-war corporation located in Arkansas in the fallout timeline is unclear, but if there is a parallel, that would potentially be a major economic benefit to the state of Arkansas. Now you may be wondering how all of this pertains to fallout. Well, while Arkansas may not have much effect on the world of Fallout, I do have to admit that it's interesting that Texas is barely ever mentioned in the Fallout universe. After all, the state has the second highest population behind California, and it's the second largest state behind Alaska. The high population in particular makes it seem like it would be a place to definitely explore, or at least reference, in some of the Fallout games. Plus, while we associate California as being a major economic hub, after all, California would be the fifth largest economy in the world, provided it was its own country, Texas is certainly no slouch as it is also a major economic force for not only the United States, but also the world. While it's true that we can't be sure if companies like ExxonMobil, Halliburton, Whole Foods, and others exist in some form in the Fallout universe, I think it's safe to say that a number of large pre-war American corporations would have likely been based in Texas due to both its size and large population leading up to the Great War. Speaking of population, it's probably pretty likely that Texas would have a number of post-war communities surrounding the former cities of Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, and Austin. Some or quite a few of these cities would likely host a number of vaults, meaning that there would be communities of people that could have formed in the aftermath of the Great War if somehow no one managed to survive outside of the vaults. Perhaps just like we saw with Vault 15 and the eventual formation of the NCR, we could maybe see something similar in Texas as well. But at this point, you're probably wondering, what happened to Texas, Arkansas, and the Texas Commonwealth? 
Well, as I said before, there is certainly potential that societies formed in Texas much like we've seen in California. After all, while Texas isn't as populated as California is, the state still has a pretty big population and seems like it would be capable of supporting at least a couple dozen volts. However, I do have some concerns because of the supposed condition of Texas leading up to the Great War. As is mentioned in the Fallout Bible, the Texas oil fields reportedly ran dry in the 2050s, and I can pretty much guarantee this would have significantly affected the state's economy. After all, in our real world, companies like ExxonMobil, Valero Energy, Marathon Oil, Tesoro, and Halliburton are all major oil companies and account for a fairly significant portion of the state's economic performance. With this gone, the economic importance of Texas would surely lessen in the Fallout universe. Perhaps like the population decline like we've seen with the city of Detroit, perhaps Americans would have flocked to other parts of the country due to the lack of oil in Texas. It's also worth mentioning that the United States supposedly invaded Mexico in 2051 according to the Fallout Bible, and this would have likely had a great impact on Texas's development in the sense that maybe we would see more military bases on the border between Texas and Mexico. Ultimately, both the invasion of Mexico and depletion of Texas oil fields would greatly affect Texas in the post-war period. Perhaps there would be a number of vaults in the surrounding cities of San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, or Houston, but otherwise, Texas might not be as great as we think it is. I think another significant factor as to what Texas and potentially even Arkansas would be like in the post-war era is how far east Caesar and Legate Lanius managed to expand the Legion. If Caesar has managed to expand the Legion well into parts of Texas and Arkansas, as is mentioned in the design documents for Van Buren, then it's likely that whatever post-war societies located in Texas and Arkansas, whether they be tribal or not, would have likely either been assimilated into the Legion or destroyed entirely. So, there's a possibility that significant portions of Texas, and maybe even Arkansas, could potentially be under Legion control by the events of Fallout 4. In fact, I would go as far to say that this is potentially plausible. As mentioned in Fallout New Vegas, the Grand Canyon is where Caesar's Legion got started, and according to Legate Lanius, the Legion supposedly has control of territories as far away as Denver, Colorado, which is almost 700 miles away from the Grand Canyon. Caesar has also said that he controls all of New Mexico, and I'm somewhat inclined to believe this statement as the distance from the Grand Canyon to El Paso, Texas, which is located at the westernmost tip of Texas and so happens to border a part of New Mexico, is about 600 miles or so away. So assuming that Caesar's Legion has been able to expand 700 miles from the Grand Canyon, I think it's fair to say that the Legion could in fact have some territory in both the western and northern parts of Texas. However, I doubt they would be able to go much further than that because Legate Lanius implies through some dialogue that his campaign to win Denver took a long time and resulted in considerable casualties for the Legion. Plus, in addition to whatever forces were lost, you also have to consider the logistics of transporting and supplying troops that so happened to be 700 miles away. Assuming that capturing Denver really stretched the Legion's forces, I doubt they would be able to reach many of the more populated and potentially more valuable areas of Texas. For example, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, and Houston are at least a thousand miles or more away from the Grand Canyon, making them a logistical nightmare just to get to, let alone supply or even occupy. Arkansas is pretty much in the same boat as Little Rock is pretty much the same distance from the Grand Canyon as many of the cities in Texas. Granted, the roads are straighter, making the distance to Arkansas, I guess, shorter. However, I think it's still worth mentioning that if the Legion didn't have roads, it would still be at least a thousand miles for them to travel just to reach Arkansas. So I would say with this in mind, it's possible that much of eastern Texas and Arkansas may in fact not be under Legion control. 
as to who would control eastern Texas and Arkansas, that's pretty difficult to say. We don't really have much to go on, and for some reason, we aren't really hearing about the area from anyone in the games. Even legionaries, who seem like they would be the most likely people to visit post-war Texas and Arkansas, don't ever really seem to mention the area at all. This could simply have been an intentional or unintentional oversight from the developers. Or, this may indicate that whatever civilization that exists in Texas and Arkansas isn't particularly advanced. After all, it does seem like if parts of eastern Texas were a lot like the NCR, we would have probably heard about them in the games by now, whether that be from traitors or from soldiers in Caesar's Legion. Who knows, though? It's entirely possible that Obsidian or Bethesda have gone out of the way to not mention anything about Texas because they plan to make their own game or DLC content that's set in Texas, or they're trying to avoid any potential associations with Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, though I will admit that that is speculation on my part. At the end of the day, though, Texas and possibly parts of Arkansas would make for a great location for a Fallout game. There's a lot of potential here, as Texas in particular has a very high population and is a pretty considerable economic center. While it's possible that Texas could have experienced significant economic decline in the years after the oil fields ran dry, I still think we could get a lot of interesting things in a Texas-based Fallout game. Until then, we're just going to have to wait for either the Texas-themed Lone Star mod for Fallout 4 to come out, or wait until Bethesda releases a new game or DLC that highlights what happened in the region. Alright guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.